Well, hello, pre-calculus students, calculus students, and any general seekers of truth. We are going to continue our lesson here on limits of composite functions. So in the previous video, we talked about some review of composite functions. Input of one is the output of the other. Now we're going to see what happens when we take the limits of these particular composite functions. So let's start out with number one. What is the limit of g of f of x as x approaches infinity? And just as we did last time, when we're substituting in an input, we kind of leave, we consider the inside function here, in this case f, and we basically leave the outside function alone until we get the output. So look at the inside function, get the output, and then feed that into the outside function. So same thing here, this, as x approaches infinity, what we're really asking ourselves here is, what is happening to the output of f as x approaches infinity? Okay, so what is happening to the output of f as x approaches infinity? And uh, to help us with this, let's look at a couple graphs here. So with our, with my help, with the help of decimals, we can take a look at this. I've graphed uh, f of x here; it's in red, and g of x here is in blue. And again, what we're trying to find is what happens to f of x as x approaches infinity. And you can see here, both graphically and analytically, that there's going to be um, a finite answer, which is good. So as x gets huge, this, f of x, this, this red line here will approach a constant term. And because we have decimals, we can do a few uh, nice and fun things with it. So let's say, you know, f of 9999999. Nine, 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 nine. You can see that as I do that, uh, we get a number that's closer and closer to one and a third or four thirds. At an analytical level, we can also see that um, if you were to plug in infinity or as x gets, goes towards infinity, we can look at the leading terms on the top and the leading term on the bottom, and we know that it's going to approach one third, uh, uh, four thirds. But we don't want. To, but this is a composite, so we need to sort of continue the problem. So we know that as x approach, as x approach, right on the side here, as x approaches infinity, f of x will approach four thirds. Okay. And the way that we're going to write the notation here using limits is we're going to say this limit here with the composite is the same thing as the limit as x approaches 4 thirds of g of x. Okay. In other words, now you see that this x here in the first step refers to the input of f. We know the output is going to be 4 thirds. And in the second step, that that limit x approaches four thirds is referring to the input of g. Okay, so as x approaches infinity, f approaches four thirds, and this four thirds here is going to be the input of g. And g, not too difficult to figure out because direct substitution works. Four thirds plugged into this function uh, will give us one over one third which is just going to be equal to three. Okay? And let's back that up with our graphical work here. And um, I, as we do this, you know, the graph is very helpful. So let's see, f of, excuse me, this is g of f of x, right, is going to be this, uh, is that what I asked for? Ye yes. Okay. And um, as it's going to be this, 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 this black graph right here. And, um, we can say that g of f of uh, 9999999, you see, as this gets bigger and bigger towards positive infinity, uh, we get a number that's closer and closer to positive 3. Okay, So there you go. Um, that sort of, that at least confirms that what we're doing here uh, makes reasonable sense. Now, I also caution you a little bit about relying too much on graphs and decimals later because... Um, you know, some of the problems are going to get trickier and graphing will get complicated. But at the introductory level, it's nice to see it and it's nice to see it visually. So we know that this is going to be our final answer. As x approaches infinity, and let's read it this way. The input of the inside function, as that gets huge, the output of the inside function approaches four-thirds. 
which then becomes the input of the outside function. So as the input of the outside function approaches 4 thirds, the outside function will approach 3. Okay, that was a little bit wordy, but I did try to be careful with an with a explanation there. So hopefully um, that's a little bit easier for you to follow uh, if you kind of just rewind and listen to it carefully and slowly. All right, let's go onwards to number two. What is the limit as x approaches infinity of f of g of x? So just like last time, this x approaches infinity refers to the input of the inside function. So what happens to g as x gets very, very, very large. Well, we can analyze this too. You're going to have 1 over a very large number, which is going to be 0. It's not going to be equal to 0. It's going to approach 0. We can see that on our graph as well. G here is the blue graph. And you can see that as, G, as x gets very, very large, as the inputs get very large, the outputs of G gets very small towards 0. So we can write this next step in the limit here as this is the limit of f of x as x approaches 0. Now, we have to be careful here because it's not just that f approaches 0. f is approaching 0 from the positive side. It's decreasing towards 0 rather than increasing towards 0. That may not make a difference in this problem or it may, we don't know yet, but let's be as uh, precise as possible. So as x gets, in the, in the second case here, let me erase this stuff, as x gets closer and closer to infinity, right, um, g of x gets closer and closer to zero, but it decreases to, towards zero. So I should, I should say from the positive side, in other words, from positive infinity downwards. In other words, g of x is decreasing towards zero. So it's approaching zero from the positive side. Okay, from, from positive infinity going towards zero. And so that, that helps to guide our, uh, our work just a little bit here. What happens to f? as you approach zero from the positive side or from the right side, well, this is going to approach negative one-fifth. Okay. Because there is no discontinuity there, um, we know that we can just take zero and plug it in for f, and we know, we know that's going to get, get us negative one-fifth. Okay. And I should say that for f of x, if we were to approach zero from the negative side, we'd also get negative one-fifth. So it might not, it doesn't matter in this case that we put this plus here, but I'm gonna put it, the plus here because we wanna be as precise and correct and accurate as we possibly can. And, uh, in, uh, and you know, we wanna get into the habit of doing things precisely because there will be problems that are more challenging and more tricky where the direction that we're coming from makes a difference. So, um, and let's, let's see an example of that in number three here. So in number three, we have the limit as x approaches one of f of g of x. So once again, we take a look at the input here. Now, this is where the direction can matter because you see here on g of x, that's the blue graph, okay? This, as you approach one, uh, you have a vertical asymptote here. And it matters as you approach one from the positive side, okay, so x approaching one here from the positive side will cause g, right, g of x, will go towards positive infinity. And as x approaches one from the negative side, or from the left here, you see that g will go down towards negative infinity. Okay, so this could affect our, uh, our final answer. So let us, um, we really need to split this into two different limits because g does something different when we approach one from the right side versus approaching one from the left side.
from the positive side versus from the negative side. So in this case, uh, we are going to have to I'll put a star here. We're going to have to split uh, into two limits because again, the limit as g approaches the limit of g of x as x approaches one um, is actually two separate limits. Okay. So let's do this on a new page here. So we're going to set this up a little bit differently. Now we're going to consider what is the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side of f of g of x. Okay. And then consider what is going to be the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side of f of g of x. And let's just see uh, how how this situation plays itself out. Okay, so back to our graph. We know that as x approaches 1 from the positive side, g is going to, ap to approach positive infinity. So we can update this limit here that this becomes the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x. So the inside function, we know the, the output of the inside function is going to get huge. So that's going to become the input of the outside function. So now we can go back and look at our function of f of x. What's going to happen as to f of x as x gets very, very, very large? So in this case, x is going to approach 4 thirds. So the, the limit from the positive side of this entire composite function is going to approach 4 thirds. Now let's consider what happens to the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side. So from the graph we can see here that as x approaches 1 from the negative side, g is going to go down to negative infinity. So then the way that we're going to write this is the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x. So as the input of the inside function approaches 1 from the negative side, its output is going to approach negative infinity. And this output, this negative infinity output becomes the input of the outside function. Gosh, this is really, really wordy, but um, just play it back slowly and listen carefully. And um, let's look at the picture to compare as well. So as x approaches negative 1 for the inside function, which is g, uh, g approaches negative infinity. And then as, as, the, as the input here approaches negative infinity for f, we're going to get the exact same result as last time. So in other words, we're tracing along this way here. Okay? So this is the same thing as, uh, so as x approaches negative infinity, f of x also happens to approach uh, four-thirds. So in this case, it doesn't make much of a difference because going whether we evaluate the limit going from the positive side or from the negative side, we, go, we still get four-thirds. So our final answer, we can summarize this, because the right side and left side limits agree, remember that, that to check if a limit is, doesn't exist, you check the left side and the right side, or the positive side and the negative side. Because from coming from the positive side or coming from the negative side, we get four-thirds. We know that the final answer is going to be four-thirds. One... Um, One very uh, common mistake is that people will look at this graph here. They'll look at the graph for g and they'll say, oh, g is undefined at negative at, at x equals 1. Therefore, the whole entire limit is undefined. Well, that may be the case or it may not be the case. It's not, uh, it, it, you can't, you gotta, you gotta analyze it all the way through. It's not enough just to look at a picture and jump immediately to conclusion. Uh, but we can use the picture as a way to help us uh, 
you know, understand a little bit better of what's going on here. So if I were to graph, what was it? Let's see, f of g of x this time. Let's change this color here. Whoops. Let's change this color here to something a little bit better. Let's make it the green graph right here. So this green graph here is f of g of x, and we can see here that, let's see, as we are, now if we do f of g of 1, that's undefined, but the limit as, g appro as x approaches 1 from the positive side, so as we get closer and closer to 1 from the positive side, you see that it's going to get closer and closer to 4 thirds. Similarly, as we try to get closer and closer to 1 from the negative side, we also end up getting a number that's very, very close to 4 thirds. Okay? So there you have it. Um, the main takeaway here is that we have to consider, a, a, when we have some, some points that's undefined, we have to consider what happens as we approach it from the right and as we approach it, we approach it from the left. In some cases, like in this one, the right side and the left side limit will match up, and in which case our problem is very simple. Um, we'll see some other examples later on where that may not be the case, in which case you know, some different results will happen. Uh, as always, keep thinking hard, working hard, ask for help if you need it. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day.